Hello and welcome to this APM webinar, giving some insights into the project profession. As you can see from the slide, my name is Casper Bartington. I work at APM and I'm joined by two project professionals, Ellie Carswell from Faithful and Gould and Evelina Crook from Dyson. So the way this webinar will work is that I will give some oversight about the profession. I will then hand over to my two special guests who will in turn hand back to me to wrap up with some information about our membership and ways for you to get involved with the profession. So let's start with the textbook definition of what project management is. As you can see, there are a number of words. We've highlighted a couple of words here, which are about time scale and budget. That's because there is a term called the iron triangle, which is a triangle of important things relating to projects. And those important things are time, cost and quality. There are other aspects which now are equally important or, or important too when it comes to successful project outcomes, but we'll leave those for the time being. For those of you who enjoy pictures, these are some examples of projects. And as you can see, there are a mixture of work and non-work related projects. So we have things like repairing the rail network. We have the build of a new hospital in London, but we also have going on holiday. That's definitely a project. Going to your favorite music festival. That's also a project, not just the planning of going there, but the organization of it and non-construction projects like developing apps or changing a business. So projects do come in many shapes and sizes. Many are visible to everybody, some not necessarily so. The next two slides talk about what the key stages of any given project are. Now, I'm not going to read through these particular slides, but they are there, these bullets, just to make you realize that project management is about several different skill sets. It's about being organized. It's about planning. It's about communication. It's about teamwork. It's about being comfortable with budgets and it's about control. So project managers do come from different backgrounds, but what links them are those soft skills, the kind of person that they are. And for those of you who don't like lots of bullets, project professionals get things done. So oftentimes people will talk about project managers and project management, but there are lots of different roles out there. Um, it's not just project managers. There are other roles and we'll reference back some of those roles towards the end of the presentation so that you're familiar about what you can look for other than project manager when it comes to taking those first steps in your career. So what does it take to become a successful project professional? These days, with more people becoming a first career project professional, actually the technical knowledge is not the most important thing for many businesses. What's more important are the soft skills. And I'm sure both Ellie and Evelina will talk about the soft skills that they need to do a good job. So I shall not give the game away just yet other than to reference the fact that it's about asking the right questions at the right time. So I often think of a project manager as a little bit like a conductor in an orchestra. So bringing the players together at the right time to make a beautiful sound. One example I can give you is somebody I know who works for Network Rail. So you'd think they'd have to have a very strong engineering background. He holds a law degree. So he's not a technical expert in terms of understanding engineering, but he knows which questions to ask at the right time. And that's a really important point to take away from today. So many project professionals do not have a science background, but they have the skills to be a successful project professional. Now, before we hear from our professionals today, a couple of words on APM. So APM is the professional body for project management in the UK and beyond. It stands for the Association for Project Management. We have 30,000 members around the world, predominantly in the UK, and professional bodies offer two essential pieces of help for people thinking about career choices. And that's what you can see in bold. It's access to knowledge and it's access to networks so that you can make informed choices about what you want to do next. It's also important to note that the project profession is now a chartered profession and that gives parity of esteem with other more mature professions such as engineering, surveying, and of course in other sectors, things like accountancy. 
again, to set the scene on the profession in a UK context, APM and PwC came together to undertake some research around the size and value of the project profession in the UK, and the results are pleasantly surprising. So here are some big takeaways, hopefully for you, um, about this emerging profession. So I'll put these figures into context. So £156.5 billion is a lot of anyone's money. That is actually bigger than the contribution made by the financial services sector to the UK economy. And that sector is often seen as the jewel in the crown of the UK economy. And yet here is the project profession outperforming that. And the other takeaway from this slide for me is the sheer number of project professionals who work in the UK. So one in every 12 people in the workforce works on projects. They may not be called a project manager, but they work on projects and they help to make that tremendous contribution to UK PLC. It's also a good time to mention that project management as a profession is an emerging profession, even in the West and elsewhere in the world, even more so. So a career in projects is really about riding the crest of a wave, I would say, an emerging profession with an opportunity to make a major difference to how you can contribute to business success, not just in the UK, not just in Europe, but anywhere around the world. In short, projects are everywhere and companies more now than ever before operate in a project based way, whether that's constructing a large building or developing a new product and taking it to market more quickly than its competitors. So here are some examples of some of the companies that APM has as corporate members. And from this list here, you can see that there are some companies you'd expect and some companies you may not expect. So for those of you who are thinking about working in a consumer facing brand, then you have the likes of British Airways or Ocado. For those of you who are thinking of working in a professional services environment, you have Linklaters and Deloitte. For those of you who are wondering how projects happen in the creative sector, like BBC, that could be around a workforce transformation or it could be around constructing the new set for EastEnders. So projects happen in every sector increasingly so, which is why it's definitely worth your while listening to the rest of this webinar. And there are not just projects, but there are mega projects. These are often, but not always, construction projects dotted around the world the cost of which runs into the tens of billions of dollars or pounds. So we have here three examples, one being the Olympic Games, one being Burj Al Khalifa, and the other one being the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. So for some of these, there may be a requirement for some project roles to have a STEM background, but definitely for not all of the roles. So that's a brief introduction from APM about the profession, the emerging profession, the emerging chartered profession. But now in the heart of this webinar, it's time to turn over to our project professionals. First up, we have Ellie Carswell from Faithful and Gould, who will walk you through her journey so far. So Ellie, over to you. Thank you for tuning into this webinar. It's a real privilege to speak to you all today and hopefully I can inspire you to join the project management profession. So I'd just like to highlight my journey into project management and why it really is a career to suit everyone. So now I'm just going to talk about my route into the project management profession. So my route is by no way conventional. If anything, it's the complete opposite, which I think is so fantastic about the profession. As Casper mentioned previously, the profession really is varied and you work with people from all different walks of life, which is fantastic. Just a brief overview of my journey. So in June 2014, I left school after completing my A-levels in a real mix of subjects, not knowing what I wanted to do. I went straight to university after school and chose to study my passion, which was languages. And throughout my time at university, I got involved in many initiatives, not just to do with my degree. And I had the opportunity to become a student ambassador where I could speak to the younger generation about university and what degrees can offer um, in terms of future career prospects. And in my time, I realized I love being in a leadership role. And so I took the opportunity to become a lead student ambassador. And through doing that role, I realized that there were many skills that came to light that actually resonated with project management. And I thought that a career within that profession would be quite interesting. So in October 2017, I attended a careers fair at my current university and I met my now employer, Faithful and Gould. In May 2018, I then completed my degree. And soon after that, I started working as a graduate project manager for Faithful and Gould in one of our regional offices in Tunbridge Wells. 
as part of my graduate scheme with Faithful and Gould, I'm fortunate enough to be put on a construction related master's, which is an accredited degree, which helps me to gain the knowledge I need to work within the construction industry, but also to work towards my professional chartership. And from just a year on now, in October 2019, I'm now assisting on large projects across various sectors from health, education and residential, and I'm actually managing small projects of my own. So now I've talked about my journey, I'm just going to show you what I really enjoy about project management. There are many things that I enjoy about my day job, but the profession itself is so diverse, and that really is the top thing which is so important to me. Diversity in your day job means that no day is ever the same, and each team brings different dynamics. And team dynamics is really important in a profession that is ever-changing. Projects are never the same, so having an opportunity to have a job where everything is so diverse is really interesting. Another thing I love about project management is responsibility and being responsible for the delivery of a project, but also being responsible for the various team members that make up that project team. Another thing I enjoy about project management is the commitment you make to community. It's clear to see that the projects that we work on make a clear difference to those that live around that project and those in the community, from education to residential to healthcare projects. All the projects that we work on make a difference to the people who use that building in the future. Lastly, I'll come on to innovation. I love that you can always discover new methods of design and construction every day. No project is the same and the industry itself is very diverse and there are always new methods of design that will take us forward into a rapidly changing future. Now I'm going to describe who I work with on a daily basis. As Casper mentioned previously, the project profession is very diverse and we work internationally. Whilst the office I'm currently in is in the UK, the wider business that I work for works internationally. I not only work with the people within my office and within my project team, but I work with clients, contractors and the wider community to ensure that a project runs successfully. Whilst I may be working with a quantity surveyor, for example, within my office, I may be working with an architect from across the country or a client who resides outside of the UK. Now I'm going to talk about the key skills that I feel are needed for project management. There are many soft skills that are incredibly useful when striving for project management success. I've listed a few on the slides and I'll describe what they mean to me and how I use them on a daily basis. Analytical skills. I feel these are really important because as projects differ from day to day and no project is ever the same, it's vital that you can think on your feet and analyse data and analyse situations in order to get the best outcome. Collaboration. Collaboration really is key as you work with different teams full of different people from different walks of life. So working collaboratively is important for the success of a project. Communication is very important also. In order for a project to be a success, holding good communication skills, whether that be talking on the phone or conducting a meeting, is really vital. As mentioned on a previous slide, innovation is brilliant for the industry and we need innovators in order to drive new projects and new methods for project success. Integrity, this is a bit of a personal favorite. I feel having integrity is really important when working within the project management profession. Sometimes it can be very easy to be swept away with the typical success constraints for a project and soon lose heart and lose the honesty that is so vital for project management. Being able to take a step back from your project delivery technical skills and have integrity is really, really important. Then listening. Listening is obviously key as the project management profession is very diverse. You'll be working with many people who have different ways of working. It's important whilst to have good communication skills to be able to take that step back and listen to the whole team so that everybody is working collaboratively. Organisation is very important. Being organised and being able to do things on time to a plan is vital for the project management profession as everything is often done to a time constraint and time is money. Planning is also very important. 
Planning can be done from a very low level up to a very high level. So planning can be done on a daily basis, just from what you need to get done in the office, or it can be across a whole project, planning which stage needs to happen first and what needs to happen by what date. Service. We all have good customer service and we've all witnessed bad customer service. Customer service is key as we are working for clients, for contractors and for the community and we need to ensure that we deliver high level service and ensure that we are filling the client with confidence in our service. And lastly, teamwork. The project management profession wouldn't be itself without teamwork. We work in project teams and we work with external teams in, to ensure the successful delivery of a project. Therefore, teamwork is vital in order for this project to be a success. Now I'd just like to talk about my typical day to day. Well, here's the thing, no day is a typical day. I work on projects across sectors, varying fees, working with different project teams and different clients. Just as a snapshot of what I do day to day, I've worked on the health sector projects, education, residential, moving on to the Ministry of Justice. But it's what I do within that day, which really differs. And I love the variety that comes with working as a project manager. From time to time, I may be in client meetings, taking meeting minutes, ensuring that a project is running to time. However, on other days, I may be on site, visiting the real progress that is happening. On other occasions, I may be considering risk and creating risk registers, which is very important looking at how projects will unfold and what future risks may be of interest. However, as you can see from this chart, the industry itself is very diverse and there is no typical day for me. Working as a project manager in the construction industry is brilliant because you get to work on projects from various stages. I love working on projects from the planning stage right through to construction phase. So you get to see a project from conception right through to delivery. I'm now going to move on and talk about my aspirations for the future within the profession. It feels like a whirlwind since I've joined as a graduate project manager in the industry and my aspirations for the future are really clear. By 2020, I'd love to complete my master's in construction project management and take another step up the ladder in order to become a chartered surveyor. I'd like to note here that there are various ways of becoming chartered within the profession and by no means do you have to stick to one route. The APM for one offers a chartered route, however, as I'm working specifically in the construction industry, I'm following the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors route in order to become a chartered surveyor. By 2023, I'd really like to manage a portfolio of projects on my own and have that responsibility that I mentioned earlier. I love looking at team dynamics, so it'd be great to be responsible for a team and ensure that that team is working towards the success of a project. By 2025, I'd love to take on a strategic role overseeing project delivery. Business development really interests me. And what's good about project management is that you can have project managers who are really technically minded and have a lot of technical knowledge, but you also have project managers who have that strategic knowledge. And this is important to create that cohesion within a whole project team. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Evelina Cook and I wanted to first and foremost say thank you to APM for giving me the opportunity to talk about the profession as I've experienced it so far. I hope that the presentation will give you all an idea of how I've come about to become now a program manager, previously a project manager, and how choosing this profession can upgrade the skills you have, how you can gain new skills and all the endless opportunities the profession brings as well as the rewards that are out there up to grabs for all of you should you choose to come on this fantastic journey to project management. I hope you enjoyed this one and this slide specifically I've put together not to try and sell myself or give myself a gold star for the achievements, it's actually to let you know that hey, I can do it, and this is what possibly you could do too. 
So a number of years ago, on the left-hand side, you can see the picture of me when uh, it was a day when I received my delivery from the consultancy I worked for at the time. It was my, I would say, day one or a week one in the construction industry as a trainee project manager, and I couldn't have been happier. So that was the beginning. Fast forward a few years, and with the ongoing relationship with the APM and my collaboration with women in project management, I've been given a chance to be on the cover of the project magazine. And when that opportunity has come through and I was asked to participate, it was like a dream come true. And I thoroughly enjoyed that collaboration. Fast forward a little bit more to this year in September 2019, I contributed and written to PM Today. Uh, article has been shared online and it was trending as the most read article or number two for over three weeks. So needless to say, I am no extraordinary person. I chose the profession and this is what allowed me to do. I truly believe that anyone can achieve the same if they wanted to follow the path into project management. So how did it happen? What did I need to do to get into the industry? This is my personal journey. I do need to highlight that not everyone needs to take the steps I've taken. And actually, if I could encourage you to shorten the journey and choose project management as your first career, it was a second career choice for myself, then please do it because it's beyond rewarding and beyond diverse. But before I go into that, going back to the brief career summary I've put for you, I've come across the project management in 2011. So it happened, I was doing a NVQ in management. And as I ended up having a little bit more time spare, my tutor said that I should try project management as an additional module. And he thought it would be a good thing for me to do. Since that point onwards, I've not looked back. Frankly, I've spent a couple of years thereafter researching the profession, looking into what it is that I need to do to actually get a job as a project manager. I needed to do a bit of a conceptual research on that topic. And what I've also decided through that research was the industry in which I wanted to put myself in as a PM and the context I was interested in. So it happened, it was construction, yes, it was a conscious choice. My dad has a construction company, not advertising. He doesn't operate in UK, sorry guys. But um, that was giving me the flair for the architecture, for build, and made me think that it would be a good fit. So what did I do after the first two years? Well, in the two years, I've done a bit of training. I've done a course in Prince 2, and that allowed me to get a role as an assistant project manager for one of the renowned engineering consultancies. As soon as I started as an APM, I've come to realize that I needed a bit more knowledge and I needed to upskill and, and continue adding to my box tools I had. And that's in the year one of my professional career in, in the sphere, I've come across of APM and Ever since I have been uh, collaborating, working closely and utilizing the APM framework of training. And, and that's the reason why I would say from then on, the only way was up with plenty of hard work and some hours at the office. Now, okay, I really want you to see the love and the passion I have for the job. But also, I do need to highlight that you will have to put some effort to, to be a success. It won't come easy. But don't let it frighten you. Perseverance is clear. Six years on, having followed the APM framework that I've mentioned before, I am now officially a program manager working on client sites for Dyson, looking after major projects across the UK and Asia. And I must say, I couldn't be happier. I can hear you asking the question, and I'm going to answer it. Dyson and construction. Well, yes. Dyson is a vacuum maker predominantly, but it's also a technology company. It does enormous amounts of research and development. We do manufacturing. We also nearly did an electric car. I say nearly because I'm sure you're aware of the news. 
And lastly, there's the Dyson Institute, which gives an amazing opportunity for some of the brightest to study and work debt free all expense covered. On top of that, get paid for the job they do. And this is what Dyson is about. So to give you some images to go alongside of what I just explained that Dyson does, these are the examples of some of the fantastic projects I've had the pleasure to be involved with or support Dyson and delivery of. You'll see there's a heading on my slide saying facilitator to invention. I can't show you the R&D spaces that we create to facilitate the development of the various exciting technology we're trying to crack. But what I can tell you is that going from the left clockwise, you see our beautiful round house, which is the hub for our Institute of Dyson Engineering, where the students can collaborate and work through the various topics they've got at the university at the time. Going to the right, our beautiful spaces in Malaysia, where manufacturing and development also takes place. Going down, you'll see our great lightning cafe on the right-hand side of that picture. And what you can see on the left-hand side is, I call it the glass box, but it's a building called D9, where the heart of our research happens. That's where our engineers think about the next big thing. And then to the left, of that image, you can see the inside of the Lightning Cafe, where we had the enormous challenge that James Dyson gave us in putting an actual Lightning aircraft, suspending it from a ceiling into the glazed box and creating a fantastic collaboration space as well as a great place to have lunch. So, going forward, I know I've been all about Dyson, but in my early career, I have also participated in some exciting projects as a consultant, and this could be you. You could be doing any of these projects to choose a profession. Example, BBC Wales Broadcasting House. It was such an amazing project to participate in. Complexity was enormous with endless number of stakeholders. But hey, what a joy to have been taking part in. Housing projects. Uh, Emerson Green, namely in, in Bristol, over 2,000 dwellings that were being built to support the housing shortfall we've got in the UK at the minute and in the area. Going down on the right hand side, it's a South Mid Hospital. It's a fantastic opportunity to bring the French and the South Mid Hospitals together and put it into a state of the art facility. And to the left, another housing development, but with a twist. How beside in Bristol, Wapping Worth, if you are local to Southwest, definitely know about it. It's, it's an entrepreneurial approach to housing. So, what is that a PM actually does on a day to day basis? Well, likewise to what Ellie's mentioned, undeniably, we're busy. <laughs> we do a lot, but it's all rewarding. No one day is ever the same. Honestly, the truth, uh, you'll be meeting new people every day. You'll be concentrating on different aspects of the project and prioritizing issues you need to deal with. Also, what's important to say is that as you go through projects and you deliver different undertakings, they will all be different with different people involved. What does it mean? That means you will be embarking on a journey with new team members and you'll be leading those new characters and personalities. Undeniably, sometimes testing your people's skills, but it will always be fresh, always be new, and always exciting. The various projects that you could possibly get involved with will range in value. They will no doubt range in complexity. They will require a different approach, and they will be situated in different contexts. And all of this will constantly push you as a person to consider how you're delivering the specific tasks, the specific mandates that you've been entrusted with. If you end up taking on a position of a client side PM or a program manager, you'll be responsible for the capital expenditure. What does it mean? That means I look at all of the costs that entail delivery of the project. It's construction costs, all the other direct costs that client may need to face, as well as operational forecasting for the OPEX costs. You'll be responsible for scope, time, selection of your team, 
it will be down to you to make sure you've got the right people in the right place at the right time. You will be choosing contractors. You will be reporting to executives. You are or will be or have an opportunity to be the single point of responsibility. And boy, it's fun. You will also be the mentor. That is so important to highlight. We've mentioned some of those soft skills. You have got to have a level of emotional intelligence and the ability to approach individual on their own merit. The one knowing how to get answers, that will also be you as the mentor and the leader. People will come to you to ask you, what would you like me to do with this particular topic or issue? You'll be the one who will set the pathway, ensuring that the project is constantly aligned to the business you're representing. Well, this is an exciting one. What makes a great project manager? You'll see that the item number one I put on there is passion. I couldn't reiterate more to anybody who I talk to that if you want to do this and you're passionate about your chosen profession, you will be great. There isn't a job spec, there isn't a characteristic for an individual that makes sure that you are successful. But if I was to point one thing, it's the passion. Second, ability to listen. I must admit, through my professional development and between me starting at early doors and being six years in, I am learning to speak less and listen more. And it works. When you're surrounded by a lot of technically sound and intelligent people, you need to give them the opportunity to outlet their knowledge so then you can make the best sense out of it. Ability to embrace change and sympathize with those who are scared of it. The assumption for a project manager, whenever bringing change on board into the business in which they're operating, should be the one that people will resent change. And then you can come forward, you can ease them into this change and help them understand the benefits of making such changes. Follower of best practices. The best practices are the best practices. I cannot highlight it more. You have to be aware of what it is that is the latest toolkit, how to use it to ensuring the successful delivery of your project or program. That leads me on to commitment to continuous development. If you are someone who wants to stay in comfort zone and do a same job every day and you're okay with that, that's absolutely fine. But I would say that being a PM is not necessarily the thing. If you are committed to continuously developing and taking on challenges, being in this learning zone, project management will be a fantastic fit for you. Now I wanted to talk to you a little bit about CHPP. Association of Project Management and its relevance to my journey. How you've heard me pointing it out a number of times in my early slides. My journey with uh, Association of Project Management began pretty much in very early doors of my professional career and journey. I believe in continuous professional development and can comfortably say that setting up the APM framework of qualifications and training has supported me in my career to date. I used a range of the various qualifications and I began from APMP, then moving on to PQ and then moving on to the charter to enhance my knowledge of project management and to expand the spectrum of tools in my toolkit, which in turn allowed me with confidence to take on new challenges. Every single time I've done a qualification, there was something new that I discovered that I could be better at. And that was the exciting part. Applying for CHPP, for me personally, it was a target. I knew I wanted to become chartered. I knew the importance of it to my career. And it was just a matter of time for me to go for it. And I must admit, I've done it at the earliest opportunity. There, there are some prerequisites to when you can do it. So do read that from those online. But I was privileged to be greatly supported by APTM in that target. In fact, I remember a year ago, I went to a Women in Project Management conference and there was a task we were all given, which was to set out your own goal for next year, your professional goal. And I wrote there that I would like to apply for CHPP. And you know what? It's happened. 
And in fact, a year later, I have had that note sent to me as a reminder, which I found the sweetest thing. Now, I knew CHPP will confirm to my peers, and in fact, in a way, to myself that I can do this that I have the knowledge to take on the major and complex projects I always wanted. And as the complexity grows and as my teams are far reaching, as I work between geographically positioned teams, I needed to be sure that what I'm doing is right. DHPP helped me gain that comfort. Now, since gaining the status, I was promoted to program manager. Undeniably, the two were interlinked. The fact that I achieved CHPP has proven to to my first line, not what they saw, they already saw the skill set in me, but it's given them that evidence that yes, she is considered suitable to step up to that level. I enjoyed speaking to you so much today, and I hope hearing that my journey will inspire you to take up project management. And when I say I love to hear from you, I truly mean it. There's my email address on the bottom. Please do drop me a line if you've got any questions or if I can elaborate on anything I've said. Or in fact, if you want to become part of the ISIN team, we always need pioneers. So you're welcome to look up our careers website. And again, come to me, speak to me whenever you feel like it. Thank you ever so much for listening. Ellie, Evelina, thank you very much for your professional insight there into what the project profession has done for you. So for those of you listening to and watching the webinar, you need to think next about what your next steps could be. So one thing that you might want to do is use the professional body to build that knowledge and build those networks, as I mentioned earlier on. And one good way for you to do that is to become a student member of APM. The great news is that that doesn't cost you any money. Provided you have more than six months of your degree left, you can join via the URL that's on the screen at the moment and you can get the access to the content. But more importantly for me, you can gain access to events and you can join the LinkedIn groups on social media and get involved with the discussion that we shall talk about a bit later on. If you're a final year student who becomes a student member and you're interested in learning which companies have project management graduate schemes rather than rotational ones, we've done some research of our own corporate members and there are more than 500 of those and we can share that information with you just to make your research that bit easier. So access to knowledge, access to networks, access to a potential employer, that's what student membership can give to you. And then hopefully once you join the profession, you can work your way through the different levels of membership, which you see at the bottom, going through to our full member status, which is known as MAPM. And you may be interested in our fellowship, which is FAPM, but that's definitely for another time. So APM as a professional body does offer qualifications. The one I've highlighted in bold here is the one that you're probably going to come across if you get your place on a graduate scheme. So most graduate schemes and indeed every apprenticeship out there will contain a project management qualification. You would expect to do that within the first 18 months or so of your studies and that acts as a stepping stone for high level qualifications such as our PPQ qualification, um, but we also have other specialist qualifications you can take as well, depending on the direction that your career takes. More information about any of our qualifications via the link at the bottom of this particular page. So we've heard mention made of the value of chartered status, and that's not just within the UK, that's around the world. So chartered as a brand carries tremendous value wherever you may be. So whether you're Evelina working in the UK or Singapore or somewhere else, employers and professionals understand the value of working with a chartered professional. It means being at the top of your game. It means having a thorough understanding of what it takes to be the best you can be in your chosen profession. APM is able to award chartered status to those who are project professionals. And there are three different ways you can achieve that. Those are called routes. So it could be one focused on qualifications. It could be one focused on experience. We're seeing more people choosing project management as a career of first choice. And those people will be taking route number one, which is all about 
gaining professional technical knowledge and also professional technical experience. If you'd like to find out more information about this, then please do go to our website, apm.org.uk, where there is a chartered standard section on the homepage, which will give you access to video content, FAQs, and indeed the whole process. And it would be nothing without being able to show to your peers and networks how successful you are. So whether you're a student member or whether you've just become a chartered project professional, we have digital badges so that you can promote yourself effectively through your email and social media channels. Now, in terms of building your network, one excellent way to do this is through APM's branches and you are not obliged to join any particular APM branch. So you can join as many of these branches as you would like. It's all free of charge and you may be interested in seeing the range of events that different branches hold. So we have a community area on our website where you can follow a branch. We also have an event tab on the website where you can see which branches are delivering which events. They may be live, face-to-face -face events, they may be webinars as well. I would recommend that you go to some face-to-face -face events just to make yourself visible to local project professionals and to understand a bit more about what the key issues of the day are. For those of you with a deeper interest in project management who may be studying for a project management unit or degree, APM has specific interest groups which you can see for yourself here. That's excellent for those people who know which area of the profession they're interested in working in or have gained particular knowledge in. So once again, these SIGs run events, produce outputs and are there to help you. You'll also see at the top there that we have a Women in Project Management specific interest group. That's now into, I believe it's 26th year. So we can see for ourselves that the gender balance within the project profession is pretty good compared to other professions that we've had reference today. We've got a long way to go, of course, but we're pretty satisfied with the progress made so far. So one other important point before we wrap up about what APM can do is APM produces research about areas which may be of interest to those doing a project management degree, but also for those wanting to understand a bit more about what the profession is all about. So on this slide, you can see just some examples of the research that we've done. And certainly when we go and do live events on campus, we are regularly talking about the rise of project leadership as against project management. And so there's a very useful piece of research that we've produced, which is about what skills, behaviors, knowledge and values it takes to be a good project leader. That's a great way to future-proof yourself, make yourself more attractive, more visible and more employable to a prospective company. But we also look at gender, we also look at climate, and our most downloaded report is our conditions for project success piece. Fortunately, not a long piece, but an essential read for those of you who want to understand what it takes to have a successful project. All of these outputs are available on the APM website. The easiest way to find them is to go to the bottom of our homepage and click on the APM research tab. Another way you can get involved in a more conversational way is by taking part in our Projecting the Future series of discussions which focus on some of the big challenges facing society at present. Do please get involved in these conversations, particularly via LinkedIn. It's a great way for you to once again become more visible, but also to understand what the mood music is within the profession. How are people thinking of dealing with these issues? And by contributing to those discussions, you're once again making yourself that bit more attractive to a prospective employer. And of course, it's free to do so as well. You can do that through APM's company page. You can also take part through our LinkedIn groups. So I thought I would finish with a popular subject, which is money. So for those of you looking at a graduate scheme in the project profession, typically you'd be looking at around 25 to 30,000 pounds as a starting salary for a 2020 intake. That will clearly vary according to your location, size of business and sector that you work in. But if you do want to know a little bit more about which sectors pay more than others or what some of those key roles are you should be searching for, take a look at APM Salary Survey, which is an annual survey, which you can find through a simple search on our website homepage. Just type in APM Salary Survey and you can see 
which sectors pay more than others. Of course, my advice to you would be to understand what the package is for any graduate recruiter. So look beyond the salary, look into the well-established mentoring and buddy schemes that many employers have, look to the progression opportunities within business, and there are excellent progression opportunities for project professionals. Hopefully you've got a sense from today's webinar that opportunities come quite quickly to those who'd like to take responsibility for projects in their own career. But for more on those areas, please do contact us by email or reach out via the career site, which has lots of live jobs. And don't forget, as I mentioned before, if you're looking for project management graduate schemes or internships, if you're not a final year student, you can reach out to me and I will send you that information once you've become a student member. So thanks very much for tuning into this webinar. If you have any questions for me or for APM about how we can help you, there's my email address. Very easy to find on LinkedIn. And my final point today is please use LinkedIn as a way to get closer to the profession and employees that you would like to work for. So thank you very much. And I look forward to being in touch.